Good afternoon, Judge McKeever. Good afternoon. You, I'm, I'm not the court, so <laughs> yes, you can. You, it's the, it's the only room or only room left in the in the room, I guess. The only chair left in the room. So, um, as you get seated and get comfortable, and we'd welcome your remarks whenever you're ready to start. Okay. Thank you. So I'd like to start by thanking everyone for their time. I uh, thank you for um, all of the effort that you put into this process. I especially thank those who have taken the time to meet with me individually. I know schedules don't always allow it for those who are able to make time in their busy schedules. I do appreciate that. So um, there's a phrase that comes to mind, uh, to make the most out of life to the best of one's potential. And that phrase for me came uh, from an interesting source. Um, in 1987, I was a senior at Kenwood Academy High School on the south side of Chicago. And one of the traditions they have there is to have seniors put together their future plans, their life goals, etc. And after some deliberation in my 17-year-old mind, I came up with that sentence, that my goal was to make the most out of life to the best of my potential. That's what brings me here today. Um, it's interesting because that particular phrase for me has really two components. So the first part is, what does it mean to make the most out of life? When you contemplate what that actually means, you have to consider for yourself what is important to you in life. For me, throughout most of my life, it has been community. And since community is important to me, I have chosen to engage in a life of service. And that's reflected in most of my professional positions. In the United States Navy, I served on active duty from 1991 through 1998. I was in the reserves from 1999 to 2007. That was part of my service. Um, as a lawyer, I was an assistant county attorney in Ramsey County from 2001 through 2007. I worked as an assistant county attorney in Muscatine. And most recently, being appointed to the bench in 2015, I have continued to serve to the best of my ability. Now, there is a second component. And before I get into that, I'll, I'll tell you something that I find to be interesting, and that is when we hear things and learn things over the course of our lives, sometimes things that stick with us for years and decades come from our friends, our families, parents, coaches, teachers, and other people who are important to us. But in some cases, these words come from complete strangers. And I'll relate to you a story in which a complete stranger, I've never seen him since this incident, and I had not seen him before this incident, but in July, on July 21st, 1997, I had to look up the date. It was actually easy because there was an important event on that date. The USS, at least important to Navy guys like me, the USS Constitution set sail for the first time in over 100 years on that date. So a number of uh, folks, Naval officers, volunteered to participate. I was one of those volunteers, and I boarded the USS Ramage, which was one of the escort ships for the Constitution that sailed around the bay. On this brief voyage, it was just a few hours, I met a guy who uh, at the time was a Navy SEAL, and he was going either in his last year of law school, he was going part-time, I think, or maybe he had just completed. I don't remember which. But the point of the story was, during our conversation, we were talking about our future. And at that time, I had not yet started law school. Uh, I started in 1998, graduated in 2001. And I remember saying to him uh, words to the effect of, you know, I was kind of worried about the competition. And he kind of paused and looked me right in the eye and he said, you know, I can size people up pretty well. And we've been talking now for a couple of hours and I know I just met you, but let me tell you something. You are the competition. Don't sell yourself short. And so those words stuck with me, even though, like I said, I'd never met this guy before that day, never seen him since, um, but those words stuck with me. So I have thought about when it is the appropriate time to take the next step in my career. 
And I've tried not to sell myself short, but I also want to make sure that I am sure that the timing is right. And so that's the other component to the phrase uh, that I stated when I came in here. Make the most out of life, the second part to the best of your potential. So the potential is don't sell yourself short, but also make sure you're ready for the next step. So as I sit here before you today, I'm convinced that I am ready for the next step. And I think that given um, my service, my life in service, my, the breadth of my experience, and the things that, um, well, I know you've had tons of applications to read and they're all over 100 pages, but <laughs> to, to summarize, I do think that I have the dedication, the experience. I'd like to, to point out the fact that one of the things that I think is very important about this is that you have to keep up with the workload. And I recognize in my application that there were a couple of instances in the past when I have had rulings that have um, gone beyond what we would want us to do, uh, myself included. Um, that is not a recent uh, thing. In the last year or so, I wanted to make sure that I could keep up. I always knew I could keep up. but. The truth of the matter is, I'm a very deliberative person, and sometimes I'll say, well, I'm gonna think about this for another week. And then another week turns in, well, I'm gonna think about it for another two weeks. And I've just stopped doing that, you know. You can think about something for three months, four months, five months. Very rarely do you come to another decision if you have thought about it carefully and if you understand all of the things. And if you look at the rulings I have currently outstanding, you won't find any that are old. I've got a handful, I think most from June and July. So, um, and I'm gonna work on those this weekend. So uh, I'm here uh, because I want to continue to make the most out of my life to the best of my potential. I wanna continue my life of service and I feel that the time is right. So with that, um, I would like to yield back the remainder of my time for questions from the commission, if it please the commission. Thank you. We'll start questions with Commissioner Graber. Okay, I'm not sure if I wrote it down correctly, but I, I heard you say something like, uh, don't sell yourself short, but make sure you're prepared for the next step, kind of. Yes. Um, what, what is it particularly about this vacancy that you feel that you are ready for the step? Yes, thank you. So, um, so to be clear, I've had a lot of my friends tell me that I was ready last year and even for the time before that. The one thing that, and they kept asking me, so why haven't you applied? Why aren't you ready yet? And I think the one thing that was bugging me was the fact that every once in a while I'd get a case and I just wanted to think about it for a little bit longer. And I wanted to cure myself of that before applying for this job because quite frankly, they don't have a chance to think about it a little bit longer. They need to make a decision file it and move on to the next 20 cases. And so now that I've satisfied myself that that would not be an issue for me, I feel like I'm ready for this. Thank you. Right, thank you. Commissioner Chase. Thank you. Um, thank you for your application. Thank you for being here. When you and I met, um, you said something that stuck with me. Uh, if we believe that our institutions are here to serve the public, then we need people in those institutions who have the mindset of wanting to serve the public. Would you expand on that and explain what you mean and why that's important? Yes, um, so one of the things that, and that actually was derived from, I recall a question I was asked years ago. Someone said, is the justice system good enough? And I said, no, it's not. It's not that I think it's bad. It's not that I think that there are lots of horrible things that need to be addressed immediately. But if you're an institution that serves the public, it's never good enough. If we think it's good enough, then what we're telling ourselves is that we are perfect and we are perfectly executing the rules. I've met a lot of really smart people. I've never met a single person that I would say is a perfect person. So it doesn't mean, and I try to improve myself each and every day with everything that I do. And that doesn't mean I'm beating up on myself. It doesn't mean I'm beating up on the justice system. It simply means the public deserves the very best. And since we can't give them a perfect system, 
it makes sense for us to constantly think about how we can improve the system so that we can provide a greater service. The service we provide to this generation is hopefully better than the service that was provided before because we can learn from each case and that collective knowledge can be passed down to the next generation. Hopefully, the next generation can be served better than this generation. Not because we're trying to do anything wrong or being lazy, but simply because that knowledge that we gain, we can use to refine and make things better. And I think that's what we should do. Commissioner Pearson. Well, first of all, thank you so much for your service to our country. Tell us how you feel your military experience will benefit serving in the Court of Appeals. So the military experience is interesting because um, I think I learned a lot being in the military. I received my commission uh, in 1991. I was 21 years old. And I think I was assigned to my first ship when I was either 22. I had to go through some training. 22 years old, they say, OK, here's a group of 25 people. You're in charge of them. Make them do stuff. And <laughs> OK, you know, you've got the rank to do it. And you tell somebody to go do something, and they outrank you. They're going to go do it. That's one, that's one thing that you have going for you. But what I learned was the best thing to do was to have people who were motivated, who wanted to be part of the team, and who wanted to perform at a high level. Because that made, that made the result that much better. And it also made. Uh, the process that much easier. If you have people that you tell to do something who want to do a good job as opposed to people who feel like they're just being forced to do it. And I mean, to be clear, in the military you are forced to do it, <laughs> but um, there's a way to relate to people and that's team building. And I think that that same concept of team building I have carried through to all of my positions throughout my life. And uh, so I think that's probably the greatest um, thing that I learned that I could apply to uh, my current situation. Thank you. Commissioner Marquardt. You've talked a couple of times now about um, maybe taking a little too much time to be deliberative. What, do you, what, did it, what exactly did you do to have that self-evolution or, or self-development um, so that you wouldn't continue to take that time? Well, uh, honestly, um, it was... Uh, feedback I received, so um, I take the time to try to ask people um, questions that will help me to improve. And of course, you know, most uh, most professionals, when they get to this point, they think they're doing a fantastic job. But as I said earlier, I think everyone can stand to improve. And most of the feedback that I received had to do with. You know, sometimes um, people, the legal community is really small, and so people talk. And while this wasn't a really large number of cases, I'm sure a couple of people might have said, you know, it would be nice. I, I really appreciate getting that ruling, but it would have been nice to get it a few weeks earlier. And I really took that to heart because, as I said before, as a servant of the people, one of the things that I want to do is I want to perform at a high level and I want to provide a service. So I made it a point to address that. I felt that that was something that I really needed to address. And um, hearing that it actually might have an impact on people, however small, it may be only a handful of people. But to those handful of people, that delay in a few more weeks was probably something that increased their stress and made their lives miserable until they got my ruling. And hopefully their lives weren't quite as miserable, although who knows. <laughs> but. In all seriousness, um, that was what prompted me to, to make that change, my desire to serve the people better. Commissioner Henderson. I have no questions, but I want to thank you for your service. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Parrish. Judge McKeever, I noticed you talked about your experience in <coughs> Minnesota as a prosecutor and then down in Muscatine County. Uh, what can you share with the commission about your skill level or ability to be fair to defendants who would come in front of you and to the defense lawyers that would appear in front of you? What uh, skill set do you bring to that perspective? I think that uh, the best prosecutors um, are prosecutors who are pursuing justice and are not uh, doing anything except that. And that was something I learned early on. Um, my first experience 
not my first, but during the first few weeks of working at the Ramsey County Attorney's Office, there was a guy who was, um, I, he remembers Miranda versus Arizona coming out in 1967, so I don't want to say he had been working there for some number of years. His philosophy, <laughs> I was trying to figure out, his philosophy was that um, it was part of our responsibility to be fair to defendants. One way you do that is you review the cases. And you know, he said, look, if you see a fatal Fourth Amendment flaw in the case, then <laughs> have a conversation with the, with the um, person who investigated it. Um, don't charge that case and then move on to the next case. And that was the kind of integrity I learned early on. It wasn't just about um, filing a certain number of cases uh, or prosecuting a certain number of cases, but prosecuting those cases which um, were which were fair and in a manner that recognized the necessity to protect the community but also balance that with the um, obligation to be um, fair to the entire system. Because here's the thing, it's not about the, um, it's not about the win or loss rate for a good prosecutor. What it's about is something bigger than that. And as a judge, it's the same thing. When I walk in the courtroom, it's not about me, it's about the integrity of the system. And the integrity of the system can only be preserved if everyone gets a fair chance. And that's what, the, uh, that's, that's what we promise the people. We promise the people that they're going to have their case heard by a fair and impartial fact finder and that they will get a result that's not based on uh, who's got the most money. It's not based on who's the most popular. It's based on the facts and the law applied uh, to those facts. Commissioner Hoig. Um, kind of going back to it, we've touched on this quite a bit, but what are you actively doing then to try to keep yourself in check from not you know, dragging those cases out longer? And I guess, like, it, hypothetically, if you've got the position to continue to keep yourself in check because of the volume of cases that you would encounter. Um, I, if I find myself uh, wondering whether or not I should deliberate for an additional week, I 100% of the time these days decide that I should not and that I should just <laughs> violate. <laughs> um, and I've, that's something I've been committed to. Okay. And, and as I mentioned before, this is a little over a year now. Um, I have been current, and if you look at the things that I have pending at the moment, you'll find things from June and July. Thank you. All right, thank you. Commissioner Hoytink. Uh, I, thank you for your service, and just thank you for the example of seeking out, receiving, and responding to um, constructive criticism or an opportunity to get better and just being open about it, I think, uh, I think that's refreshing. Um, you, you're very thoughtful with respect to, so I'm, I'm thinking you probably thought through this, but are there judicial role models or persons who have mentored you or um, someone you look up to that, that you see yourself trying to emulate parts of as a, as a judge or, judi or judicial officer? Um. I would say that um, we have a pretty good group in the 6th District. Um, my colleagues there have been phenomenal. Um, I have learned a lot from, from them. And I'd say, you know, in terms of like looking up to people and, and trying to emulate, um, some of them are, they all have good qualities, but some of them are outstanding in the areas of working hard. I believe in that. Um, being fair. Um, the thing that I really admired most, though, I will say, uh, one judge in particular who is almost impossible to anger on the bench. And I, I don't just say that just because I think it's nice to be a nice guy. What happens is, if you, even if you're angry, if you display that anger, especially towards an attorney or towards a client, what happens in my view is that client is going to most likely feel they never had a fair chance. Mm -hmm. And I think the only thing worse than losing is 
feeling like you never had a fair chance because then that brings discredit on the whole system. And since it's the system that you're trying to um, make sure has integrity and be something that people can believe in, I think that having that demeanor is probably the most important thing. You've got a lot of brilliant people. People know how to, we all know how to read and write. We can all analyze cases. We can all understand what statutes mean and, and write opinions. But being able to maintain the dignity of the courtroom when people are yelling at each other or not taking turns at doing things like that. Um, my favorite thing to do is this. I'll just call time out and I'll say, I'm sorry, but there are three people talking and I can only hear one voice at a time. So let's go back to the last question and go from there. Uh, so that's, I think that is what we should look up to. Thank you. And real quick, bigger Navy fan, you or Judge Thornhill? I think <laughs> probably me. <All> right. <laughs> and Judge, we are out of time. We okay, thank, thank you, you for your application and wish you all the best. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.